Okay, let's, uh, let's begin. First of all, welcome to the ZBA meeting of this Thursday evening. And we have myself, Chairman uh, Lee Levy, uh, Secretary who functions as Vice Chairman when the Chairman is absent, uh, Ted Diesel, Marilyn Altman, and who am I forgetting? Uh, Lee Levy, or uh, Keith Lane, rather. It's only been yeah. 10 years, it's okay. That's right. <laughs> yeah. I, we had chatted, so I knew you were there. Um, so we're all set. We have uh, five board members present, and we're ready to go. And just if we have anybody out there that's uh, struggling to get on, you have a few minutes yet before things really pick up. I have to read uh, instructions. And beginning now, members of the public can call in and listen to a meeting. They will not be able to speak or see any of the meeting participants. Um, each meeting will use a unique meeting webinar ID. Please find the information using the link above, which I'm gonna read out just because I haven't heard it before. HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash www.norwalkct.org forward slash 1913 forward slash meeting dash notices with meeting and notices capitalized. Members of the public who wish to provide live comments will need to register in advance and use the Zoom meeting platform. We have someone that uh, regulates the platform and they can move you into position to talk. All participants will be muted upon entering the meeting to speak click raise your hand indicator and you'll be called on by the host of the meeting during the public comment section of each application. I added that. Please find the information using the link above. Members of the public who wish to view the meeting but are not participating can view a live stream on the City of Norwalk YouTube channel. Say it again, City of Norwalk YouTube channel. This stream is delayed by approximately 20 seconds. Please find the information using the link above. Though that link is a popular link. The meeting recording and minutes will be posted on the City of Norwalk website within seven days after the meeting. Members of the public who wish to provide public comment are encouraged to submit those via email in advance of the meeting for those comments to be read into the record they should be submitted at least four hours in advance of the meeting start time to tmaldonado at norwalkct.org. And if you haven't submitted them, submit them right now. So that are the, those are the instructions. Um, I don't know, coming to up to this link issue, Tammy, do we have that obviously immediately available on the uh, city of Norwalk website? Yes, so if they go to the meeting page, um, yeah. the agenda, they click the agenda, it'll take them to the Zoom. Okay. Uh, so we have already done a quick roll call. Uh, and we are called to order and we have public hearings coming forward. Uh, first would be 21-1216-01, uh, Emily Kelting. Lee, can you carry on? Okay. Um, variance of street line setback, 25 feet required, 15.1 feet proposed, and rear setback, 10 feet required, 2.2 feet proposed for an accessory building, shed, 
on a corner lot in the C resident zone, property located at 6 Old Saugatuck Road, District 3, Block 47, Lot 13. Request, the applicant seeks a variance of the location requirements for a detached accessory structure on a corner lot. Background. The property contains a single family dwelling built in 1917. The previous existing accessory structure was removed and the right to place a new shed in that location was lost. Subsequent to a neighbor's complaint of construction activity at the property, a building inspector visited the property and notified the property owner that permits were required. Analysis and findings. The applicant identifies financial and aesthetic issues for the proposed location. Staff does not see a zoning hardship hardship to justify the approval of variance. The goal of the zoning regulations is to eliminate or reduce nonconformities. Therefore, the shed should be installed in a location that can meet required setbacks. Mr. Chairman, back to you. Uh, yeah, the applicant uh, identify please. Um, I am Emily Kelting, the applicant, mm -hmm. and I would like to make a presentation, sure. if I might. Please uh, do. Okay. Um, Tammy, can I share uh, a screen? Yep. Yep. Okay, hold for... Hmm. Uh, so let's, Michelle, uh, is, Michelle is controlling, just so you know who it is. Excuse me? Michelle has been con controlling who's on, who's off, what you can share or not. And just to want to use her name and get her attention, that's good. Okay. Um, so Michelle, I, I'm not seeing, so when I hit share my share, are, are you going to let me share my screen or um, do I hit the share screen below? I have the ability to, so you'll have to press the share screen button at the bottom and then it'll pop up like, uh, browsers you have open and you click what you want to share. Okay, I have to get my, I have to get my, I have to escape <clears throat> here a second um, from full screen to get my browser open that I want to do this with. Yeah, don't worry about it. Okay, so, um, so I'm going to do share screen now. Let's see if that works. We'll let you know because we'll see it. Okay, um, it's, and it says, we don't see it. It says Matt, uh, Microsoft PowerPoint unknown. Rats. Um, hmm. I wonder how why it isn't seeing my PowerPoint. Maybe advanced. Happen to have a copy of it, or if um, Emily, you can email me a copy of the PowerPoint. And I can share it for you. Um, okay, let's see if I can email. Or what I could do is I could hold up this. I have, I've made copies of each, each slide um, that's in the PowerPoint, and put it. Should, I could put it in front of my, you know, my box here. You could see it. Sure. Which is which is better for you? Um, how long a PowerPoint presentation is it? Uh, about ten minutes. All right. I think you should email it to Michelle. But to do that, you have to have Michelle's email address. <laughs> yes, I do. So is it M. Andres Kiewski, uh, Michelle? Yes, that's me. Okay, I'll spell out her last name. Yes, I, I, yeah, uh-huh. You're ready to write. So you yep. start with an M for her first initial and then her last okay. name, A-N-D-R. Z E J E W S K I J E W S K I. Okay. Yeah, it's Michelle Andrews Andrewski. Um, what that's that's a toughie, Michelle. Is it just yeah. M Andrewski? Yeah, you have to put the M. 
if you're yeah. talking to me uh, via email, I'd be A Conroy. So you use the first initial and then the, the full okay. name and at norwalkct.org. Uh -huh. norwalkct.org. Okay. So I'm going to try to send this now. Good. Uh, let's see. I'm going to share it. Share. Share Varian's presentation. Um, so I'll send a copy. Um, do I do email as attachment? I'll just do this. Um, you should attach your PowerPoint file to your email. Yes. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so here I go. M A N D R T. Okay. And with this at the speed of light. And with the speed of light, there it goes. I okay. said, what's mailbox? It's too large to send in an email. Use mail drop. We'll try that. <sighs> okay. So we default to the, you got to show it to us then page by page because okay. we can't uh, spend time with it. Okay. Okay, so here it goes. Okay. Can you see this? It's gonna be backwards. Is that the old shed? That's the old shed. So, yeah. here, so when I moved into my home at six old Sagatuck Road in April of 2018, there was a very, very old shed um, off the driveway on Gilbert Street. The doors didn't close. Ivy had pushed up through the roof and into the interior on three sides and um, the roof leaked. The metal exterior was dented and didn't reach to the crumbling uneven floor held up by a few Can you see this? Yeah. Oh, this is a very sorry. It's a it's a vertical, so it's. I got it. But you see that see that see that hole there, in the foot, uh, um, held up by a few cinder blocks in the corners. Through these openings, rats took up residence this summer, and as I heard from my neighbors, this wasn't the first time this happened. The shed was both unusable and represented a health hazard. When my 14 month old twin grandsons were playing in the yard with the rats scurrying by, I knew I had to get rid of this old shed. Um, yeah, first, I'm gonna quickly show you my backyard. So this was what it was when I moved in, it's backwards in, um, in uh, 2008. Um, the fence was not in great shape and the top of the old tree in the um, was was dying and you know limbs had crashed from this tree into the yard and over the telephone lines. This is the back this is my backyard. Let me see it. this is this is the, the back left side of my garden this year. In the past two years I've taken down the dying tree replaced the fence, dug new garden beds from the walkway to the terrace to the back corner of the yeah. yard. Can you, can you concentrate on the shed? Um, and what was the gray building in the background of your garden? Was that the shed? The building in the background of my garden here? Yeah, yeah so the, gray, this is the, a, gray, this the gray structure. No, I think it was the second one you showed. That. Oh, it's a fence. I get it. All right. That's a fence. That's that's a new fence that I put in from the brown fence. Okay. Okay. And so this again was what it was like when I moved in, um, and I, um, my neighbor and I put a fence along this property line. A new uh, a, a, that was a privacy fence, and then I replaced the other fence on the other side. Okay. And I let's let's stick with the shed. Okay. Okay. So now back to the shed. Uh, let me keep going. Okay. So 
because my existing shed was over 100 years old and because it was in such bad shape, I thought I could replace it with a new shed using the same 10 by 16 footprint. The new shed would be the same height as the old shed. Instead of rebuilding from scratch, I ordered this prefab shed from Sheds Unlimited in Morgantown, Pennsylvania. I chose many upgrades because I wanted the side facing the yard to melt seamlessly with my white fence and colorful gardens. That was the front and the one side. And here is the picture of you know, the sketch of the shed from um, the back. The, the, the transom windows are on the driveway, be on the driveway facing Gilbert Street and the back side faces the driveway of Marlene Riley DeBellis and her husband, David Brandon. Here's a view of the um, interior of the new, the new shed, it's similar, it's, it's bigger, this one is bigger, but it would have, um, you know, a new rot resistant floor with insulation underneath, new wood framing, plenty of light and no rats. Okay, so Sheds Unlimited required that I show them a picture of the new foundation before um, they would deliver the shed. And so, and this is um, uh, the red house belongs to Marlene Riley DeBellis and her husband, David Brandon, and our driveways are right next to each other. Um, these, this is, which was addendum two and addendum three in the, um, uh, the application package um, and it's these are letters and petitions from my neighbors who all have driveways on Gilbert Street and pass the old shed every day and we're it was we were taking bets on when it was going to fall down and uh, they were eagerly awaiting the arrival of the new shed they were all in favor of it being in the same location as the old shed no one more so than Marlene DeBellis and David Brandon, whose driveway is within two feet of mine and who for the past few months have been looking at the back of my house and my yard as I've looked at the side of their house. We both lost the privacy that we had before. So your shed is in place now or it is- No, just- later. No, just the, this, uh, found, the foundation. Okay. It was built at a cost of $11,500. And uh, the zoning officer can jump in at any time if something goes awry here, but is it my understanding that the foundation is the exact same footprint as the old shed? Yes, it is. It's the exact same footprint. And it's built to code, and it's whereas the old shed was, uh, um, you know, didn't had this crumbling dirt floor. This is built to code. And it, if you can see here, where's this? Where's that one? It has a, um, it has, I made a stone foundation um, on the front side that faces the house to match the foundation of the old house. So, um, yeah. Okay. Okay, so so I'm sorry to interrupt. A building permit will not be required because the shed is under 200 square feet, but there'll need to be trade permit because it uh, the property was trenched for power to the shed. It already yeah, and the old shed had power by the way. Right. But but the old shed's power electricity was not up to code, and um, so when I took down the you know the old shed, I put in the um, um, I, I, I dug the trench for the new one because I knew that, you know, it wasn't up to code. So I want, I wanted everything in this project to be right, done right. Right. I wanted to clarify that it was a trade code or an electric code, not a, there's no building permit required for the structure. Okay. Uh, did Tammy, the building department, uh, electrical inspector went out and checked or no? A uh, building inspector went out because a neighbor complained about the construction and that's yeah. when he, it was Peter Kelly and he informed the homeowner that uh, permits would be required, not for not a building permit, but an electric permit, and yep. referred for referred to our office. So the old the old thing um, shed, if you want to call it that, I guess it was a garage for Model T. 
Yeah. Uh, was, was there 100 years plus? It was what? Was there for 100 years plus? Plus. It was built in 1917. And it, like I showed you, it's, it was in bad, very bad shape. Yeah. Okay. I, I so just wanted to understand how long it had been there. A yeah. long, long time. Yeah. For, literally, my neighbor said it, it did have a Model T. It was used, that was the last time it was used as a garage. Okay. From what I understand. So if you could wrap up and. Okay, and, uh, sure. Well, I'm going to now wrap. Yeah, I'm going to wrap up. So, um, you know, you have the setbacks here where you want to put the, um, where not you want to, but where the current set, setback requirement would have me put the shed. So it's on the right side of my property. It's along the line there, the right property line. And this is why I do not want to put it there. So this I don't know if you can see it. I see it. So, so in, in addition to the practical difficulty of getting the new shed into my backyard, because my yard is full and now fully fenced, um, this is what is um, I'm calling a unnecessary hardship. Um, this spectacular euonymus tree uh, was started out as a small sh shrub over 100 years ago. It, here it is in the fall in all its glorious color. This, magde, this majestic tree spans over 25 feet along the right property line. In addition, and it also um, comes out into the yard 20 feet. My yard is only, my backyard is only 50 feet by 50 feet. So um, I would have to cut it down if you, you know, to put the shed in, um, in, the, in, the, in the setbacks that are required. Yes. And um, you know, I it, it's the only cat. It's the only shade in my backyard. The canopy provides the only shade in the backyard. I've also read how the city of Norwalk is trying to preserve canopy trees, old, beautiful, healthy shade trees like this one, and not cut them down. Also. So the I don't know if you saw, but there was a hammock under the um, under the shade tree, under the uh, euonymus, and um, it's everyone's favorite retreat on a hot summer day. Um, and in spring, this um, tree is home to scores of birds who hide in its branches and sink me every morning through my bedroom window. In the fall, the glorious color, which you can see, you know, delights us while the birds devour every last fruit on this euonymus. And here are my twin grandsons, you know, reach, I think they inherited my mother nature genes um, because I am a landscape designer. They, um, uh, here are the twins, you know, reaching for the, reaching for the tree. So, oak. Let's, let's, let's wrap it now because okay. we've seen that. And okay, so the last thing is saying, you know, I'm sorry. Um, in October, I found out that my assumption that I had put a new shed in the same place as the old one was wrong. It was an honest mistake, one that I now regret. I hope, so I hope that you will you know, grant me the variances I seek so they can put the new and vastly improved shed in the same location where the old one had stood for over a hundred years. My neighbors on Gilbert Street hope that I'll be able to preserve the backyard that I have worked so hard to create and maintain, and they get to enjoy too. And the birds will thank you for preserving their habitat, and my family and I will look forward to continued enjoyment of the beauty of this tree, rocking in the hammock and savoring the most welcome shade on hot summer days. Thank you. The, the practical side of this is the tree does take up a lot of room. The aesthetics though are pretty much secondary to um, where you put the shed. And um, when did you take it down? Um, in, I think, September. A few months ago. Uh, just a few months ago. You know, I see, I've seen these, it, 
I had seen these rats, you know, scurrying in my yard, and I have I have grands, I have these, you know, little boys yeah. who are running around in my yard, and I it was an honest mistake. I thought I could. Well, I, I thought if I put it, to, it back on the same footprint, it would. I just be, wanted a quick follow up. Then you put in the foundation when? In October, maybe September. Uh, it was kind of after, um, pretty soon after I took it down. I think the foundation went in. And you learned that you really should have asked uh, for permission and made an effort to put it in a different location. When did you learn that? When the building department, Pete Kelly came in October. October. Tammy, when did we receive a request? Uh, the application or, or Emily's first, she well, first contacted first, me. Her, her first contact. Uh, let me check my email. Uh, October 14th. Okay. All right. That all jives. Um, I'm going to assume that you've made your presentation and you would be uh, answering the board's questions at this point. And I'm not the board. I'm just one member of five. So if any other board member has a question, please. Yes, I've got several. All Emily, right. is your property located in a flood zone? No, it is not. Okay. Has this shed been designed by the manufacturer to meet all relevant code requirements for structure? Yes, I think I showed you a picture of the interior. It's... I don't care about the picture. Okay. Has the yeah. structure been designed to meet code requirements? Yes. Okay. Any further? No, uh, that, those are my two questions. So clarification for me from Tammy, if um, permission had been sought ahead of demolition, am I right in thinking that, well, let me not speculate. What, what would have happened under? So the process, Keith, is that if an unsafe structure letter is required from an architect or an engineer provides that to the building inspector, the building inspector in issues an unsafe structure letter and requires that it be that, then that would preserve the uh, non-conforming location. Got it. I'm I sure wish I had known that. <laughs> if only I had known. Oh, man. So the loss of location um, is the timing issue. And by the time the applicant figured this out, it was already down. Yeah, Correct. nobody told me, you know, that I could have, uh, I, that I could have uh, um, gone to you and I, which I certainly would have, and I would have had somebody come out and say this, this shed is unusable and it's dangerous and um, um, it's going to fall down um, and there are rats in it. So, you know, I, I would have, I would have definitely, if I had known that, I wouldn't, you know. Uh, would... Marilyn or Tad, do you have a question? I guess the only thing I would ask, and this is for Tammy, um, and how does this fit into, you know, grandfathering? I mean, if the structure was a hundred years old, um, this yep. so just with the structure on and it's a dangerous, how does that all work together? So well, the three-year clause is for structures that, have, you know, if they've been there three years, we can't cause them to be, to be removed because they don't comply. However, if you remove it, Without an unsafe structure letter, you lose that protection. So that that is the issue, which I was reading about. Yes. Okay. Right. And then the zoning board can take that into consideration when they grant or do not grant the variance. Understood. Thank you. All set. Now, is there anybody here um, that? Has been wishing to speak in support of uh, this application. Looks like we have some hands raised. So I'll start with Marlene. If you could state your name and address. Oh, they both just went down at the same time. I'm not sure if they still want to talk. Oh, we have Diana. Please state your name and address. And you just have to unmute yourself. 
Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'm Jill, I'm not Diana. I live at eight old Saga Tech, and um, I just want to thoroughly support <laughs> um, what Emily is doing. She is a brilliant uh, landscape uh, designer. Her yard has been transformed into a magnificent, you should go there and have a glass of wine. Um, she's brilliant. And that shed was an eyesore. So we live directly across the street. And I've always hated the impact it had on our real estate value because it's embarrassing. It was an embarrassment. And it just was a fallen over, just a disgusting tin uh, hut. Um, so she did us a great favor in taking it down. We, uh, we've lived here for almost 28 years. And from the day we moved here, I wanted that thing gone. And of course, a, a number of neighbors who, who owned that house before Emily, you know, like tried to put lipstick on a pig, but there was none to be had. So it was an eyesore. It was a, a detraction from real estate values. And what Emily wanted to do was brilliant and would enhance the street and my real estate values as well as hers. And she is understandably, you know, she took the thing out. She wanted to put a new thing down on exactly the same footprint. Hard to know why that's a problem. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that wishes to speak in support? We have Marlene. Okay. You just I have to unmute yourself. Oh, I think they're in. I don't see anybody coming on here. Marlene, are you on mute? Looks like I had to bring him over to. Oh, yeah, there, there you are. are. There you go. Okay. Thank Marlene's you. in good shape. All right. Thank, thank, thank you, David. Thank you, everyone. So um, I agree with everything that Jill said. Oh, do I need to state my name and address to start yes. with? Okay. Yes, you do. My name is Marlene DeBellis Brandon. This is my husband, David Brandon. We live at 2 Gilbert Street, Norwalk 06855. We live directly, we live right next door to Emily. And I want to say that um, we give our full support to, um, to Emily's project of, of building a new, you know, a new structure on the same footprint as the former structure. Um, agree with everything that Jill expressed. Um, we believe it would be a real beautiful asset to, um, to the neighborhood, to the property values. And um, we, remember, we remember learning about the plan and it sounded wonderful. And we remember hearing about the care that Emily took to really make it exactly you know, the same footprint that it was. And Emily has done really beautiful things with her property. And when, when we make our turn to come onto our street, we see the flowers and the landscaping and it's gorgeous. And, you know, we think that this structure will be absolutely, you know, beautiful. And it will also be nice to have a structure because right now there's nothing there. And I think that having not, nothing there is a, dis, a detraction. It, it really looks like something is really meant to be in that place, not what was there, but something. It doesn't look natural now with that open space. If I may, the way the properties were divided before, the structure provided an element of privacy between yes. her property and ours, which is now absent. While it would have behooved her to talk to you beforehand, I assisted the previous neighbor in some rehabilitations of a building that was largely held up by its siding. The replacement would be, a, would be welcome because it would again uh, afford privacy between the two houses. And I believe from what I've seen, although it is of course due to your assessment, that the structure she's putting in there would be really quite an improvement on what had been there before. Thank you. 
Thank you. And thank you. Thanks. Any others that wish to speak in support? Doesn't look like we have anybody else, Andy. Okay, uh, Michelle, do we have anybody that indicated they wanted to speak, period? Nope, the, the, these two are the only people that were on from the public, so. Okay, good, thanks. Um, I don't think you need to address people that were complaining because there were none. Um, so if having made your presentation and had people uh, in support, I, th I think we can move on at this point. Unless you think of something that you meant to tell us, but forgot. Uh, no. Besides the grandchildren chasing cats with very thin tails. <laughs> yes, that's it. So uh, do you make you go and make a decision later? Is that how you do it? That's right. We will later. Okay. We have, we have two more um, applications to hear before we get to the point where we make decisions. Okay. So do I stay on or do, do I... Uh, well, leave, you, could, you, you could probably turn your video off and listen if you wish, okay. or you could contact the zoning office tomorrow and find out what the decision was. Okay. Your choice. Okay. But you, will you be saying it later, maybe? Pardon or, me? You won't be saying it later tonight, then? No, we will be saying what the decision is, but if oh. you don't want to hang around for another oh, hour, okay. then you're free to go and contact okay. the, the office in the morning. Okay. That, that's fine. I'll, st I'll stay on. And uh, thank you for, for, for hearing my presentation. I'm sorry it wasn't on my, my screen because it would have looked better and sounded yeah. better. Thank, thank, you you. For, thank you for hearing me. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. I'll, I'll now go off. Uh, item B, 21-1216-02, Javier Manohano. Okay. Special permit for non-renewable, temporary, and conditional, not more than two years, use of a property per section 118-1410A 2B for a contractor storage yard landscaping business in industrial one zone property located at 84 Point Street, District 3, Block 33, Lot 21. <clears throat> Request, the applicant is seeking temporary authorization from the board to continue up op to operate a contractor storage yard. This use is not permitted due to the parcel not having the required lot size. <laughs> <laughs> the applicant is currently operating in violation and has an ongoing matter with the zoning citation hearing officer. This request seeks to cure the zoning violation with a temporary approval instead of removing the business from the property. Background. The board heard an application for variance of the lot size requirement for the contractor storage yard on September 16th, 2021. That application was withdrawn, withdrawn and the applicant seeks an alternate course to remedy the violation and continue operation. Analysis and findings. <clears throat> While the board has great latitude in awarding a temporary and conditional use permit, the staff is reluctant to endorse approval. The commercial operation is an adverse impact to the two-story residential use of the property. The addition of a commercial use creates an overuse of the property. It is worth noting the property owner was also cited for an illegal contractor storage yard at his residence on 184 West Rocks Road, AAA Residence Zone in 2019. The hearing officer assessed fines and ultimately the violation was resolved by removal of the contractor's equipment and vehicles. 
Staff has concern that other properties with notice of violations matters with the zoning citation officer will see this as a potential quick fix to their zoning violations. Should the board grant the approval, consider conditioning approval with screening and buffer requirements. Mr. Chairman. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, Nancy Aldrich is with you, I understand. Is that correct? Yes. yes, I'm on the screen. Are you going to speak for the applicant, Nancy? Yes, yes, I am. Proceed. Okay, thank you. I know some or all of you were present at the September um, hearing regarding the variance. Um, I think there were a few more, there were a few others that were present as well. Um, at that, at the variance hearing, um, I expressed, and I'll just cite the facts, uh, the, the facts recitation from Mr. Levy was correct about um, what has transpired to date. Um, however, the uh, property that is uh, the subject of this um, application for a special permit at 84 Point uh, Street is um, in an industrial zone, as you're aware, and it is, uh, has been operating as a, uh, they've been operating a small landscaping business for the past 20 years, uh, exactly. It was in 20, uh, 2001 uh, or 2000, about, yeah, 2001, I think, that they, um, they uh, purchased the property with the understanding it was an industrial zone and they could use it for those purposes. So for 20 years, they've been operating, operating open and notoriously uh, as a um, small landscaping business, family run. And uh, the issue is a neighbor, uh, a disgruntled neighbor uh, said that, uh, indicated that uh, in this industrial zone, most of the properties are industrial in that area. It is next to a railroad station. It is in an area that has uh, other um, commercial buildings and, and um, businesses. It is 3000 square feet short, however, which was unknown to the uh, owners until the neighbor uh, made a complaint. So uh, the filing of the variance um, was denied, was withdrawn based on, um, uh, after the hearing, based on the advice uh, of the board and um, you know, with the suggestion uh, that a special permit be granted to determine what else um, could be done in terms of uh, this property. And based on, I know hardship isn't an element, but I indicated at the time, and um, we'll state again that this uh, family they, has been uh, run, this family business has been run by Javier Mondujano Sr., who's not on the screen, who suffered a serious debilitating stroke in 2020 and had to turn the business over to his children, who, um, in, uh, which includes Javier Jr., who's on the screen today. Uh, and he had to leave his job as well as the two daughters and the mother, and they all work for the family business. Uh, because the father is unable to, to continue the business and that supports the family. Um, the property, um, the home on the property is not uh, a commercial property. Uh, they do operate some business out of the property, but that is not a commercial, uh, a commercial uh, home other than um, is a residential, mostly residential use. The area is obviously um, commercial, industrial, and um, they have um, you know, limited the amount of, since, since this has begun, they've limited the amount of um, trucks that come and go. They've come at times that, uh, you know, to, to work around uh, the neighbors and make sure that they are respectful of, of, of some of the issues uh, regarding noise and continued um, um, too many, you know, trucks in the, in the parking lot and they have uh, kind of tried to ameliorate some of those, those issues. So the recommendation to file a special permit was one that we then uh, took upon ourselves to do. And we filed for this special, I guess, special exemp, exception, ex, exception or special permit. I think they're one and the same, uh, which would, um, according to the, um, article in the zoning um, regulations, it says that uh, each case would be considered, um, each case would be considered by the board for the impact of the use on, on the neighborhood and the structures in the surrounding area and the public health, safety and welfare. Uh, this 
as I said, the business has been operating for 20 years with no uh, issues. It doesn't having a this commercial small landscaping family business in this industrial area has does not um, based on the fact it's 3,000 square feet does not impact uh, the public health safety or welfare of that area. I think this is a good um, use of this special permit uh, because it is we understand it's it's just extending the time, but it's not creating a uh, variance which uh, didn't look like was going to be able to be obtained. Um, and uh, this is, um, I think these, these uh, I think this, they, this is a case that's perfectly suited for special permits. Um, I, I believe that um, the commission can approve, uh, approve it uh, for this period of time. They could also approve it with some conditions and um, that there is, uh, I don't see a hardship on the community by continuing this after 20 years for another um, set few years in, in accordance with the terms of the special permit. Um, and um, the obviously the Manduhanas are willing to comply with uh, whatever is necessary in order to keep this business going until there has been, uh, they can get a, um, they can seek, um, a uh, there's a moratorium right now on um, what is the moratorium on again? Uh, they 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 can't receive, they can't get a um, zoning uh, change right now based on the moratorium or a permit. So they would need time, and perhaps the the laws will change based on that area. And I think that that's something. It's not. I don't think that this opens the door to other people who are trying to. Um, you know, break out of this, you know, find a loophole in the system. I think this is a, it seems to be a good use for the special permit um, and a good purpose and a good family and a good business to be able to do this with, with a business been, that's been operating so long. So I think they would be cooperative. They have been cooperative and they would continue to be so, especially if any conditions are imposed upon them. And I would just uh, argue that granting this temporary permit um, for its uses, uh, other than the fact that it's it's too it's just three thousand square feet short, uh, does not impose a hardship on any any of the surrounding neighbors or the community that they that that property is in. And ask the I would ask the board to consider this um, request for a special permit for this family. Yeah, Ms. Holmes, did uh, did you ask? the zoning official uh, director of planning and zoning what direction he saw contractor yard uh, regulations moving for instance uh, providing for uh, smaller yards with special purposes i i wasn't told specifics about i was i was told that there were many things underway that where there were there were going to be changes in what areas could be expanded and Right now, there's also, it's very difficult to find, which is one of the problems that the Manduhanos had, finding another space in this period of time when they were notified that they were not in compliance. Um, and it was very difficult. I understand that there are other things opening up in the next two years, that there are changes that are going to be made. I don't know the specifics of those changes. Uh, I inquired of um, Mr. Hayducky of what some of those would be, and I, I didn't get a definitive response in terms of what the the modifications would be about that, but I understood that there was a possibility that there may be um, something that would be done on a property like this, but I don't know anything more than that. Okay, take take a quick pause. Tammy, sure. did the the director's letter to the board uh, get forwarded? A copy get forwarded to Nancy Aldrich? No. Okay. Maybe that ought to get done like ASAP. Things that I'm going to send it to you now, Nancy. Okay. By anything email or by... Let me, let, me, let me put down why we're doing it. Anything okay. presented to the board has to be shared with the applicant. Anything provided by the applicant has to be shared with the board. Anybody complaining has to be shared with the board. Anybody supporting has to be shared with the board. Understood. We want to just read it or do we want to... I well, mean, I'm happy to send it. I'm happy well, to send it, I will. I think she needs to be in receipt of it. Okay. I would like, I don't know, does 
the board grant time to read. I didn't know there was such a, a thing to, to read this and schedule another time. I don't know how detailed this is. Well, I, th I, I think there's a fair amount of detail, but uh, it could be done and read in a way that is a general overview. Um, the secretary could do that. I don't think he has to read every row and column in the charts in the letter. Okay. But he, could, he could give a general sense of uh, what the recommendation was. So you'll have the thing uh, sent to you by email. Is that what you're doing, Tammy? Yes. And then you can look at the detail in that. But I think I think we could say that hey, did Haydeck's letter get sent to Nancy? No. No. Well, no. Cool. I just wow. and I just received uh, that opposition letter at the end of the day, also. <clears throat> yeah, that, that that's not great. Um, so if you would just send hey duckies, but I think you want to look at the director's letter primarily. Um, Mr. Hey Ducky is indicating great frustration with trying to deal with this and that he doesn't favor uh, granting anything. That's the essence of his letter. The director's letter is more complex. Um, and so Mr. Levy, um, our secretary and former chairman can definitely uh, make a good job of uh, presenting it. That is not what uh, I've had several conversations with Mr. Hey Ducky, and that is not what he relayed to me. In fact, just the opposite. So I would request actually more time to evaluate this. I didn't know there were letters that were sent. I didn't know there was opposition. I didn't know any of this. So mm -hmm. I well, would... we, we, we will go through the hearing and then we'll see where we end up. OK, Nancy, hang on just a second. It's I'm, I'm having to copy it from one area and then I'll send it to you. OK. okay. In the meantime, Lee, do you have a copy of the director's letter or, or do you need me? I am trying to find it. It is It is listed under staff memos, ZBA, the subject um, email sent today, subject says staff memos, ZBA 1216. Yeah, I know, and I printed it out and it's sitting here someplace. I got, I do have in front of me, uh, on hey duckies yeah they were together and uh in yeah the, and if you print it on a colored printer his is more colorful ah and the worst comes the worst out Nancy, I'm going to include the opposition letter as well. Okay. I do have the director's letter in front of me. Okay. It begins, it is my understanding that the applicant. Yes. Applicant All right. And I am trying to get back onto uh, the screen. I think you're going to be forced to do some interpretation because they're chosen graphs and picks and those don't convey well. But I think you get the gist of where zoning is going. And to be clear with the board, we don't have to grant two years. We don't have to grant one year. We could grant, let's say, six months uh, in the anticipation that zoning will have proceeded to the point where they've decided how to handle contract. Uh, you want me to start reading? Sure. Just uh, and then interpret as you go. Okay. It's a memorandum dated December 16th to the Zoning Board of Appeals from Steve Kleppen, Planning and Zoning Director, regarding 84 Point Street Special Permit. It is my understanding that the applicant is seeking a special permit from the board to allow the existing illegal contractor yard to remain for a period of two years. As you may be aware, over the past year, the city has undertaken a study of its industrial zones. A draft report, the study, has been prepared, which contains specific recommendations regarding rezoning districts and changes to the allowed uses in these zones. This study was a recommendation of the 2019 citywide plan. 
POCD. The study recommends rezoning the subject site along with other properties currently zoned I-1 in this area into the new industrial two zone. Staff will be working on finalizing the zoning text for these zones, including clarifying where the uses are allowed and under circumstances, special permits, site plan, as of right, et cetera. Specific to contractors yards in the I-2 zone, certain types of contractors may be permitted and whether the use requires a special permit, site plan, or over-the-counter has yet to be determined. The following tables are contained within the report. Uh, and obviously I can't read the tables, uh, but it's Appendix B, Detailed Use Tables. And there is a second table below that. To view the draft industrial zones 21-09-30-niz-study-final-report-email.pdf.norwalk.ct.org to view the 2019 citywide plan citywide plan of conservation and development POCD 2019-2029, Norwalk tomorrow. In addition, on December 15th, 2021, the Zoning Commission adopted amendments to the zoning text and the zoning map creating the East Norwalk Village Zone. The EVTZ was a recommendation within the East Norwalk Village Neighborhood TOD plan, which was incorporated into the citywide plan October 2020. This is relevant since the subject, subject property is adjacent to the boundary of the EVTZ. As a general rule of thumb, Changes to the zoning map or changes to the zoning text should be consistent and generally in response to the prior planning effort, including the POCD. Granting the special permit in light of the purpose proposed changes could result in this property becoming non-conforming for the duration of the special permit and cause a potential unnecessary enforcement action at the expiration of the special permit. I would recommend that the board not grant the special permit. However, should the board feel there is a compelling reason to grant the approval, limiting the approval to six months will allow the zoning regulations to update for the ex Industrial, air, uh, industrial zones to be finalized and also allow more than enough time for the operator to relocate once the regulation changes have been finalized. That's the end. I think we can take from that that they've thought about how well the industrial zone language handles contractors yards and have decided that it isn't well enough and that they have to make some changes and they're gonna be allowing more things, uh, maybe possibly smaller sizes. Um, <clears throat> so with that as a possibility, um, we've been asked then maybe to hold this off only for, or allow it if we, if we chose to allow it six months and that they would do catch up in the meantime. And I think moratoriums that, that you ran into have to do with the fact of the point at which they're developing this new zoning language. Um, but you needed to be aware of that. And I think the, the big issue here was, if I recall correctly, is it 2,000 or 3,000 feet too short? 3,000. So with that in mind, um, we would have to know that your use fit the property. And so we need to talk about what that use is precisely and not talk about um, 
what might come in the future, but let's talk about what's going on right now. Okay. Uh, uh, the parking is an annoyance to the neighbors. So where do we park uh, currently? Where to, do we park currently? Uh, uh, so uh, now we, uh, as we had explained in the last meeting, since this became an issue, we uh, started taking three vehicles away and only keep on site a total of three vehicles and three trailers. We are in and out of the neighborhood by 7.15 in the morning. You know, we, we beat the early traffic and everything and we're back in no later than 5.30. Uh, in, the, in the afternoon, and that's that. There's no one coming in and out of there throughout the day. If um, an emergency or anything, I go in a pickup truck and I just drive in at most once every blue moon to get, say, a shovel or a pick fork or anything like that, and then just leave the site. Yeah. We where, are do no employees, Javier, where do your employees, Javier, where do your employees park? Uh, the employees, um, there. There's only one, or yeah, one or two that that drive and they park literally in front of our house. So it's that it's not on the neighbor's side, it's not in the neighbor's driveway or anything like that. They park either on valid parking for street parking, or inside the driveway. Or so in you're you're in. They are in public street parking. Is that correct? either in public or in, in our driveway, depending on the day, you know, there's no assigned place. But if that were an issue, you know, we, we pick up most of the workers. I leave my house at 630, uh, like say the three or four that I pick up and that's that. And then the other two that drive and that's it. Uh, yeah. The driveway accommodates how many vehicles? The driveway is really long, um, but right now we only park three of the, the work trucks there overnight. Um, throughout the day, we could fit as many as uh, 12 vehicles there at, at most, but we only, you know, leave three. The, the driveway is always open for, say, like, if the energy company goes and puts fuel in, you know, if the tenants have to get in and out to do yeah. laundry, et cetera, you know, the driveway is always open, like, you know, for any emergency situation and stuff like that. What noise production do you have? Do you have rock splitting or none of that? Of lots of stone movement or nothing. Uh, nothing that that that's no. There's no dump trucks dumping there. No mulch. Nothing is on site that that's, that's dropped or anything. The most noise that's made there is say um, during the mowing season. We we load the vehicles every Tuesday afternoon. I'd say five in the afternoon, we tarp them and then the guys are out of the way in, in the morning. You know, they just turn the vehicle on and, and leave to the gas station. We get gas and that's that. You know, there's one no last question before yeah. I turn it over to the rest of the board. Uh, yeah. I think, Nancy, we pretty much heard your presentation, so I didn't really mean to cut you off. But oh, I that's okay. Make, that's okay. Wanted to, make, wanted to make sure you had all the information the board has. Sure. But my last question to you, um, Javier, is when you repair the lawnmowers or the vehicles, where do you do that? The, the vehicles being repaired are taken out to shops um, that we don't repair on site. And the, the lawnmowers, the only thing that's, that's ever done, like I said, is them taken in and out of the, the, just the, the driveway from the, the garage onto the truck and out. You know, the repair of those are, we always do either at Brandman Power Equipment or at Norwalk Bar, Power and Lawn. All right, so do you keep yeah. a lot of the equipment in the garages? Is that what you're doing? Um, yeah, we, we, we keep uh, some, just lawn, a few lawn mowers, that's it. And weed right. whacker, yeah, okay. that's uh, all. Anybody else have questions for Javier? Yes, I do. When yeah. we talked with you last, as and I'm going with a faulty memory here, Yeah. but yeah, you indicated that you were seeking other locations for your business, but had been unsuccessful to that point. Have you continued that search? And what has your experience been since we met last? 
Um, since we last met, like I said, we took a very proactive initiative. Since this became an issue with the noise ordinance, you know, we wanted to steer the, you know, the aggravants that any neighbors had with us, you know, and we get along fine with all the other commercial neighbors in the neighborhood. So no one ever really saw this as an issue, except for the, you know, just the one bitter guy that's across the street. He's the only one who he goes and it's not just to us. I've seen it with my own eyes. Uh, people that go and park for the Metro North, he goes and as if he was a parking enforcement or something, or, um, you know, a, an authority in the town creates handwritten signs and goes and puts them on the windows. You know, yeah. that's, no, I under, that's something I'm that's sorry not to, yet. Um, I'm so but, sorry to interrupt, but I, I understand you have a very difficult neighbor. Yeah, My question no. is, are you having any luck in searching for a new location? No, we did. We did. We took initiative and, and we park in, in a neighboring town. We put three vehicles over there. So we have, you know, two of the crews just go there directly. They don't even come to Norwalk anymore. My Javier, Javier, yeah. Javi, he wants to know what luck you had finding another place to uh, we got other than that house. Yeah, you we looked you yeah. looked and you didn't find other places. That no, was... we we got waitlisted um, for a place at the end of Bowen Street, and we got waitlisted as well next to Divines and Norwalk Power there, and a commercial units that, that's there. There, we were gonna take in uh, a welder who passed away. His his units, and we got even though one isn't being used, they didn't they didn't give us authority to use it yet. And they just, you know, told us that we're on wait. So they're, you know, finding one in Norwalk is, is really difficult at the moment. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. I just Any wanted other, to, it, I just questions? wanted to add one more thing about Javier Javier's business, uh, the Mondohanos. They don't do any work on that site. They're not masons. They're not chopping stuff or block, doing stone work. They're not revving you know they're not running their their machines at that that place they don't repair them they don't there's no work it's literally a place where they have the guys uh come load up the trucks and go that's it so it's not the only the only noise uh, or issue i believe is um and they park legally and, and the very few guys you use the parking public areas the noise is that that the trucks leave i guess that's it but there's no work like it's not a site that does, I can imagine, I've drift, walked by industrial places. I was recently in Boston thinking, how does somebody live here? It was like, ah, all day long, right? So, you know, it wasn't, it's not that kind of thing. It's very short periods of time that they're just picking up their trucks, going to their jobs and coming back. And that's it. Yeah. Okay. I just have a question, Ms. Aldridge. So um, I'm just curious, but going back 20 years, so we're saying now that they're about 3,000 square feet short of this yes. business. But when it started, that was not the case, or what? Well, I was. I wasn't. That's a good question. Um, I was not the attorney who sold, uh, who did the closing for the property. Um, I looked through all the paperwork then to determine um, where in the paperwork, because they had their closing documents that it said that this was a limited area for the purposes that they knew when they were going in. There's no paperwork that says that there are restrictions or that this is an area that they had to get a permit or anything. So they bought this property in good faith, believing with the attorney that they had representing them at the time that, uh, and the, the buyers, uh, the, sorry, the sellers, they were the buyers, that this was a property they could use for these spe specific purposes. They never had any reason to believe it wasn't. So they didn't know they had to get a permit, which had they known that years ago, they would have been able to get a permit. Then there's the more, you know, they, they haven't been able to get one, but that was, they went fully understanding that that was the purpose and the use of this. In fact, it was all quite a shock that the property was too short for those purposes that was just, just one, learned one, last year. One, one quick pause. I've got to get up and let somebody out of door. So I'll be gone okay. for about, about one minute. So I'll be right back. Okay. Hey, you got it. Okay. <laughs> this in other um, words, was a property that was sold and Norwalk at the time, the, the town of Norwalk had no issues with it, the city of Norwalk, and nor did anyone. No, and it was pre previously, it was used, uh, from my understanding, according to uh, senior Javier Mondujano, um, for um, a automobile um, 
you know, a commercial automobile, I don't know if a repair place or whatever. So they had a garage that, that had automobiles that had lifts and things like that. So it was a, it was understood to be a commercial area for motor vehicles. That was what the prior use was. Um, um, and they built a garage for that purpose. But so there was no, no understanding that it was anything different from what that they were going to use it for. Unfortunately. Any other questions from the board on this? Nope. We'll wait till Andy gets back. Sure. Well, I will, I'll make the statement. I hope your client uh, is taking a proactive role in trying to find another contractor's yard. They have been ever since okay. they started. That, they I absolutely. would encourage that. Right, um, they have been. You know, because obviously they are aware that not only this site, but their residence on East Rocks is very problematic for contractors yards and it's an issue throughout Norwalk. And, um, you know, just establishing a contractor's yard because you own the property is gonna become far more difficult. Right, which is why... part of the reason it, it already is, which is why they're having the problem finding another place. Exactly. So, you know, that's, they absolutely, since from the get-go have been, have been looking, it's a constant thing. So okay. we were hoping that things were going to change. Uh, I understood that they were, and there were going to be more things opening up, but that hasn't happened so far. Well, so. I would say that things are not going to open up until the uh, changes to the zoning regulations for all industrial zones is finalized and approved. Uh, you know, obviously no one could buy, at least currently a piece of industrial property without knowing the very specifics as to the use of that property. That would be important, I agree. And when are these things taking place? When are these? It's um... going on as we speak. Okay. Uh, Tammy may be able to comment on that, but... Uh, you know, I and other board members, I assume, are getting notifications of the the progress on uh, the industrial zone meetings, along with the waterfront zone meetings. Mm -hmm. So uh, I would anticipate there's going to be some changes mm -hmm. that may or may not benefit your client. Right. Anyway, but the, the more it they're at Sorry. work right now, and uh, what what they're trying to tell us is that they've already made some real progress, and they want to finish up. So I think if we give them a few months, they will. Uh, did you give any input to the zoning uh, director, planning and zoning director, uh, Nancy? Uh, you mean Mr. Hayducky? No, no, no. Um, Steve Kleppen. Steve Kleppen is his no. Name. I didn't receive the information that that was re re sent over tonight I, that I've glanced at. Obviously, no, I didn't. I'm not talking about you getting his input. I'm, and did you give him your input? For instance, um, you see a need for um, accommodating landscape businesses. I have spoken to Mr. Hayducky about that, but I have not spoken to Mr. Um, Clumpen. Okay. No. All right. Thanks. And anybody else that wanted to ask questions before we move on, see if there's anybody in support or opposition. We do have some letters to read, I do think, right, Lee? Uh, good question. Lee, there's one letter of opposition. That means I have to find it. Package here. 
Um, one of the difficulties we've had with contractor yards is that contractors have a tendency to grow the use. And what starts out as reasonable ends up being unreasonable. And, and it's difficult to regulate. It is extremely difficult and takes a lot of time of the city's officials. So we don't want to put a problem in place. Um, the particular use that's been described, in my view, fits, but it is an area that is smaller than it should be. With that, we'd have to put restrictions on it and we've got to see what the zoning code eventually turns out to be. So it's kind of like a timeout that we might authorize, but it depends on what the rest of the board wants to do. Um, I do not have that uh, letter in my package. It, it was emailed with the, uh, it says, yeah. um, hang on. I have, I have it. If it needed to be read. Marilyn, go right ahead. Okay. Let it rip. My name is Fodi Klepto-Giannis. I am writing this letter in opposition to the request of the owners of 84th Point Street. I was not in attendance for the last meeting on September 30th, but have reviewed the video. I may not be able to attend this meeting either and just wanted to make sure I could share some reasons for opposing. The original complaint was made complainant was made by another party, but I also feel slash added to the complaint months ago. My father, Christos Cleto de Giannis, is the owner of both 79 and 81 Fort Point Street, both multifamily homes across the street, and I lived there for my entire life until 2015. I still live in East Norwalk and I'm at the residence daily visiting my parents and maintaining and managing properties. I've experienced the issues I will mention further down as a resident, as a visitor, and in complaints and in complaints from tenants. We have always followed the city guidelines and maintained the appearance of our properties in a presentable appearance and have always respected neighbors. I'm aware of the history of the property located at 80 Fort Point Street, having known the previous owners. They did not operate a mechanic shop, as mentioned by the attorney Florence O'Grinch, previous owner built that second garage for her clay slash ceramic art and pottery pieces she needed to store when she closed her business, which was a place for people to paint clay or ceramic art pieces and pottery. We knew her well, having grown up across the street and visited to paint some clay ceramic as children. It operated on the corner of East Avenue and Fort Point Street at the location, which is now a lot being used for the work being done on East Avenue. The city of Norwalk field card still clearly states that use as a ceramic shop, quote, quote, as a ceramic shop, end quote. In the noted section on the current field card, I also attached in this email. They didn't have a permit for an automotive shop. I believe they did get a mechanic, quote, mechanical permit, end quote, at that time, which I believe refers to the fact that they were adding electrical or possibly some type of, some type of heating to the structure. It was not used by her or anyone as a mechanic shop at most, if any mechanic work was done. It was just her son, Harry, who sometimes worked on his own car. She was a wonderful, quiet neighbor. She bought the house with her husband in 1955 and lived there until her passing. She was very nice, respectful, and somewhat of a, neighbor, and somewhat of a neighborhood watch as she always spent time on her front porch during the day. The Mandujanos landscape business has been operating for many years in violation of city zoning laws. And although there weren't any formal complaints until recently, there were many complaints from tenants at our houses at 79 and 81 Fort Point Street. Not reporting violations is common, but that doesn't make it acceptable as their attorney pointed out and doesn't mean that there isn't a violation. There are several reasons the situation shouldn't be allowed. As landlords, we have had complaints before and as residents have not been happy with the situation, but just had not made a formal complaint. Earlier this year, we also lost a great tenant because of the constant early and disrespectful noise and commotion going on there. So they're acting in violation of city code and zoning with regard to operation of their business, impacts the quality of life of our tenants. Should they be allowed to continue operating, the violations would create future financial and quality of life impacts for both owners and residents alike. Below are some reasons I feel they should not be allowed to continue to operate in their current capacity. 
and their request for an exception should be not denied, aside from the fact that we have a right to have neighbors following city zoning gu guidelines. Bullet point. I personally have seen many more than six employees mentioned by the attorney. Bullet point. Some employees park on the street talking, taking up spaces from morning until evening, as many as seven days a week when they are busy because they are not allowed to park. They well, would not break. Marilyn froze. I'm sorry? Your, uh, your feed to us froze, and we got to see you in mid sentence. <laughs> okay. Uh, some employees are increasing up space from morning until evening, as many as seven days a week. Bullet point They would operate equipment and make excessive noises early on Sundays, a total lack of respect and consideration of the residential neighbors. Bullet point. They have many more than three trucks, they stated, parking in the driveway. They have been parking less trucks there since the complaints, but with approval, they might attempt to change that again. They use pickup trucks and trailers, rack body, rack body trucks and box trucks. Bullet point. The garages are not used to store any vehicles for tenants or otherwise. The business itself stores much more equipment than stated as well not just picks and shovels, as their attorney mentioned. They have many mowers, large blowers, and all other equipment typical of a landscape company with many employees would have. Bullet point, tenants or guests are not allowed to park in the driveway. There is a chain across the entrance to the driveway throughout the day to prohibit vehicles unless trucks are pulling into or out of the driveway and the workers are starting or finishing their day. As a three-family house, it should have, I believe, a minimum of three parking spaces available for residents. They, it seems, allow or offer none. Only a few more bullet points. Bullet point, they have used the public street and sidewalk to load trucks and have been seen riding mowers to the gas station to fill them up in the past. Bullet point, they often stop traffic at busy times of the day to back in trailers and trucks, making, making it unsafe. Bullet point, often during the months when they are moving, well, when they are mowing more, they pressure wash, pressure wash equipment at the very beginning of the driveway and all the runoff, dirt, debris, possibly oil or gas from the equipment gets washed into the street and runs to the storm drains, which is an environmental issue as well. Last bullet point, allowing this type of violation to continue would open the door to many more businesses in a similar situation to request the same at this time. Let's not set a precedent for those other businesses to request to stay in violation of our zoning laws for a lengthy time, even if it isn't permanent. Pictures and videos submitted have been submitted with complaints showing much of what is described above. Thank you for your time and consideration of all opposing views. Thank you for reading that. Um, any further questions from board members? Nancy, did you want to respond to uh, the uh, the letter that was just written? Uh, no, I think there are some factual incorrect uh, things that are factually incorrect there. Um, but um, you know, I, I know that there's more space in the driveway. I know that people, uh, the tenants, do park there. I know that um there uh he did i don't they don't work on sundays uh he indicated there were less trucks than usual that's correct um i mean i think i i, I don't know um you know i don't know how also involved he is in this property i don't think he lives at the area i don't know who you know i i don't know um you know what his i think he has a beef with the the neighbors and he wants to have a higher rent district and you know this has been operating for 20 years like this and now he decides it's not, uh, you know, he, he doesn't like it for, for whatever reason. So, you know, I, I, I mean, I know you have to give it weight. I don't give it much weight. And I think that there's not really much harm in allowing them uh, the Mondo Hano's time under the special permit rule, which I think is, is um, meant for this type of, of situation that they be allowed time to find a place and, uh, 
you know, operate with, uh, you know, obviously continued respect for the property and their neighbors and the small family business that they're doing. I, I that would be my only, my only comment to that. Okay. Well, I, th I think we could add restrictions if it became necessary uh, to approve it, uh, that would probably answer a lot of that. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I see, uh, we do have problems with, as I said, contractor yards throughout the city. Um, particularly as they grow and the businesses thrive, then more and more stuff shows up and it becomes um, an annoyance to the surrounding folks. However, this is an industrial zone and it is right now and has been. And one of the things that we've also encountered and because I was on the zoning board and I've been on ZBA quite a while is we have nearby residences uh, where they don't appreciate the fact that it is industrial as a zone and they'll talk about uses that they find okay but really have nothing to do with the industrial zone so um, i think there has to be a recognition that it is an industrial zone that's about all i have to say to that i i agree with that thank you can i add mr cobra sure yeah i mean our like our our representative Nancy Aldrich had stated, you know, we're in and out in the morning and we're in and out in the afternoon at no more than 10, 15 minutes. I, I would find it more concerning if I was a tenant with the construction that's been there for now about, I'd say four years at the corner where it used to be uh, the Mexican bakery that was knocked down prior was East Avenue Pizza before East Avenue Pizza made the new location next to Tacos Mexico. Um, they're drilling, hammering, powering seven days. And the new uh, high-end living behind the East Norwalk station, they, they were in construction and made way larger noises than we ever make. The train runs there 24-7, 365. You know, the freight train runs at what, two or three in the morning every Wednesday and Saturday. So it's yeah. like, you know, if there's noises that are way bigger and beyond our 15 minutes i don't know how our 15 minutes in the morning and in the afternoon are such an issue if those are things that go on every day the car wash is 365 you know every day and they're from their two locations they're one location over the gas station in the corner 365 gasoline being delivered every day you know and I still, I don't know, it's really appalling how 30 minutes maybe total of a truck or two driving into the driveway and us going out to make a modest living is of such concern to someone, you know, but that's right. just beyond me. No, I understand your points and you're, you are right near the railroad track, by the way. We're right behind the railroad track. So he's, say, what, not even 50 feet away from, from the railroad uh, track and from the railroad noise? You know, so that's, that's, that's probably that's, has a lot to do with why you're an industrial zone. Um, correct. Any other board members that uh, wanted to ask a question or offer a, a, a summary comment? Because we, we will discuss this further when uh, we review the application to vote on it. And as I understand it, Michelle, we don't have anybody waiting. Uh, in the wings to comment one way or the other, correct? That is correct. We do not have anybody else um, from the public tonight. Okay. Right now. All right. So I think uh, we're ready to move on. Everybody's real uncomfortable. They're fidgeting in their seats. It's time to move on. Okay. I've got my agenda. Uh, 21, 12, 16, 03, 89, Day Street, Healthy. Okay. Zero Burritt Avenue, also known as 89 Day Street. Special permit to allow a use to extend from the I-1 zone boundary to um, 
uh, of the lot into the C resident zone of the lot, not more than 25 feet for a marble and stone fabricator per section 118-1410A2A property located at Zero Burrett Avenue, also known as 89 Day Street, District 2, Block 82, Lot 21, Unit B. Request, the applicant requests an extension of the I-1 zone into the C resident zone in order to obtain zoning approval for a marble and stone fabric manufacturer tenant. Background, the property was granted a special permit to extend the I-1 zone by, <laughs> excuse me, by the ZBA in 2001 for an addition to the existing warehouse. The warehouse spans two parcels labeled Unit A and Unit B. Unit B is the subject of the proposal. Unit B has greater than 20,000 square foot lot area. Analysis and findings. The parcel is split between residential and industrial uses. The marble and stone manufactured tenant would be contained inside the existing commercial building and is an appropriate use in the I-1 zone. <clears throat> Um, before we proceed, I got to admit confusion. Tammy, did you write the uh, staff analysis and findings? Yes. Okay. Do you mean that without need for any variance whatsoever, they can go ahead and um, do the appropriate use in the uh, I-1 zone? So Correct. They don't if need they, anything from us? Right. If they were, if that, if the whole lot, which weirdly is split into two, but if uh, into two, you know, um, building zones, but if yeah. they were industrial one, it would just be an over the counter permit. But we're asking for the special, they're asking for the special exception to extend this so, industrial so let, one. Let, let me understand again further. So are they asking to creep the uh -huh. industrial use into what would be uh, a non-industrial zone? Is that what they're? Yes. Okay. All right. I got it. All right. Um, I'm sure they'll explain themselves when they make their presentation. Yeah. Um, yeah John, are are you speaking? For I am. The applicant. Okay. Yeah, I'm speaking both on behalf of the uh, applicant and the owner of the property. I represent them both. So the applicant is the Gemma Stone LLC. And Could you owner... please identify yourself? Oh, I'm sorry. For those that don't know you. Yes, I'm sorry about that. My name is John Hall, I'm attorney with Lovejoy and Reimer, uh, which is a law firm in Norwalk, Connecticut. Thank you. Okay, John, proceed. Um, and the uh, the applicant is the Gemma Stone LLC. So this is this is an interesting property at the corner of, of Burrett and Day. Um, as Tammy noted, it is it is bisected by a uh, zoning line. Um, which I'm gonna show you in the old fashioned way because I'm afraid if I try to share my screen, I might explode or go away. But this is, this is, what, this is what we're talking about here. So this is, Burrett runs along the, the bottom. This is Day Street over here. Can you see that? Okay, is it too close? I see it. And then this is the zone line in the, on the lot. So here- Would you do me a favor, John? John, yeah. do me a favor. Take your pen slowly around okay. the entire outside edge of the lot so that we can understand what we're looking at. Okay, so this right here is the entire outside edge of the lot. Okay. This whole thing. This, in the with the yellow highlighting, is the, uh, the zone line. So from here to the corner, it's a C resident zone. And, and from here out and up, it's an, it's an industrial one zone. Got it. So this, the, the applicant, which is the stone uh, manufacturer, is using this area here on the lot. 
And what we're what we're asking for is for you to bless the fact that he is encroaching into the C zone to the extent of what? 22 feet over here and about 24.6 feet over here. So that's kind of where we're going with this. And that's and that's a uh, the intrusion from the industrial one zone into the the C residence zone is permissible um, under that section 118-1410. Um, if you guys, uh, you know, put your blessing on it. The, um, yeah, as we can, answered, we can make an exception. We can do that. It's a special permit. So, and it is a, it's an unusual lot in many respects, but I think this, this, uh, it did get a variance before for a similar purpose in 2001, uh, granted by this, uh, this board. And it is, it seems to me that the, the regulation I just cited, which was passed, I think in 2013, was kind of created to address these kind of split lots that are, you know, Norwalk is peppered with here and there. You have, you know, one lot sharing two zones and maybe a historical use that's kind of encroaching in from one into the other. So in this case, you know, this, this, this whole lot, this is a, condomin a commercial condominium. This is unit B of the condominium. The mass of the Claps warehouse, what used to be the Claps warehouse is unit A. And this is kind of, hangs off the bottom of that, of that warehouse. Um, so it's commercial condominium. This, this area here, um, you know, has been used in this, for these same purposes for years and years and years. Nothing is changing. We have this tenant who is a, who wants to use make an industrial use of this building and this 25 foot area, you know, is part of the C zone. So it's really just coming in to legalize and permit the stone manufacturer to continue to do what he's been doing without a permit. And, and that and, and you know the the city discovered this and said you're doing this without a permit. You need to get a permit, and um, and that's why we're here today. Um, like I said, you know, we're not, I think the 25 foot regulation addresses it, just this kind of area. This avoids the need to go through a whole variance application and variance hearing, you know, by allowing this encroachment to a minimum extent, you know, just the 25 mm -hmm. feet. And, um, and, you know, as of now, I did get one call from a neighbor um, on the notice and she said, well, are you changing anything? And I'm like, no, we just have an, a, a use in the building you know, a tenant who is now occupying the building who wants to do this, uh, make use of it. So uh, nothing's changing. We're not, we're not altering it in any way. We just have a new person in there who is using it in an industrial way um, that encroaches into the C zone. On the same lot um, is, the lot is owned by the, by the um, 89 Day Street. On the same lot, you can see, this is a residential use here. So this is a multifamily, building right here that shares a lot with the industrial use. Um, and, you know, that is the abutting residential use, which is also owned by this, by the same owner. There are no other abutting uh, residences. Uh, and the, the only ones that, you know, had any interest across the street, they all got notice. I'm not aware of any negative uh, feedback to the board. So, you know, I would ask that you permit the use. Uh, the, the real quick question is that area that you want to encroach into, can you describe it to me? Yeah. Exactly what's there on the ground? So what that is, is that is the building. So this is the built, the shaded area is the building. The area that's encroaching into it is part of this building and this use is in here. So it's, so you enter it, this is the parking area over here, you yeah. enter the building over here and you're using it inside as okay. the, Got as it. the um, marble mountain. So it's an interior use, um, but because it is a manufacturer, there are, there is a, you know, some of the marble is outside. So, which is also permitted is, is my understanding. It depends where. Anyway, um, the 
neighbors that you would be concerned about are at the multi uh, family dwelling that uh, is to the south east. Right. You know how many families reside there just off the top of your head? I think it's I think it's three units. I should know this because it's my client's building, but I think it's three units in there. It might be four, but I think it's right. three. Okay, thanks. I just wondered if it was like 10. Yeah. No. Uh, board members. Um, Unmute yourself, Tad. I just want to point out that I am required to recuse myself from this consideration. Anybody else? I really don't have any any questions. Um, I just, in my own mind, are we seeing these last two applications because the industrial zones are being studied and may undergo changes that might be detrimental in the future to the owners of the properties? Wouldn't you think that that is an unknown? So if you own the property, you might be concerned. I would be very concerned. Yeah. And either myself or my attorney would be, you know, uh, riding hard on the zoning staff to know exactly what's going on. Yeah. I don't see this one application as uh, being similar to. Uh, well, I think they're very different, yeah. but I still think it goes back to the root of we're looking at industrial zones and. Well, they can't become too differently or else we're going to spend the rest of our lifetimes in court. Oh, ab absolutely. I mean, uh, there is such a can of worms here uh, it concerns me. So the moratorium is for contractor storage yards, one and two family homes in industrial zone, not okay. for, so he would be, if the, if was, if the whole parcel was I-1, he would go in with a regular over-the-counter permit. Okay. That clarifies an awful lot. And, and now that I realize that it's uh, internal to the building, um, I think uh, I understand it. Yes. Keith, you had a question? No, no. <clears throat> and Tad, you can just not listen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I take it that we have no one waiting in the wings for this application either. Is that correct? Correct. All right. Terrific. All right. So I think we have uh, closed uh, this hearing as with all the others and it's time to move on and deal with the applications directly by the board and john you're willing to if you want to sit around and wait be my guest if you want to be told about, you can call zoning and find out what we decided oh i've i've waited i've enjoyed the other hearings so it'll be interesting to hear the uh, analysis of the board so i'm gonna i'm gonna hang out yeah you enjoyed it more I'll, than others. i'll mute myself <laughs> <laughs> Um, what order do you guys want to take this in? Uh, the I, one we heard last first? Yes. Okay. Uh, so we will take, um, let me see if I get this correct. We'll take item 21-1216-03. Two one yeah. Three. 89 Day Street. Yep. Adam. I'm shuffling paper here for a second. Um, I, I, I would think that we could approve this. Uh, I, I don't think there's a lot involved. Uh, if it were outside and we were talking about going into an area that was common uh, or a parking area or garden area, then I might have a problem. But if it's internal to a building, I just don't see the issue. 
I feel the same way that the uh, the the use is contained within an existing building. There's no further encroachment. And, uh, you know, at some point in the future, the, uh, the building owner uh, will have to deal with the multiple tenants in a way they seem fit. So I would have no problem uh, approving this application as it's proposed. I second that. I'm in favor. Andy, you're not mute, you're muted. Yeah, I muted myself because I have a phone ringing five feet from me. Oh. Um, uh, I didn't think you guys enjoyed listening. But with respect to the fact that Tad is recused, there's four of us, and uh, anybody want to make a motion? Or do you want me to? I'll make a motion that we approve this application as submitted uh, in that the proposed changes are internal to the building and will not affect uh, the operation of uh, the site. Or the adjoining uh, uses. Uh, yes. So with it being contained internally to building, a, that is fine. And it needs to remain contained internal to the building. In case somebody had an idea that they could kind of spread out, but I don't think that's going to be acceptable. So with that in mind, all in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Raise your hand. Aye. We're going to do something different. We're also going to say aye, and we're going to raise our hands, and we're going to say all in favor, raise your hand and say aye. 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 Got it. So just to, to clarify, oh, sorry, Marilyn seconded that? The, the TAD is, is recused, so you have Marilyn, Andy, Keith, and Lee in favor, and Lee made the motion. And Marilyn and, seconded? And I second. You second. So Marilyn can second all the rest of them. <laughs> we stepped on each other. Okay. Okay. Thank you, board members. I'm sorry. Bye. All right. Good night. And the next is 21 12 16 02 84 Point Street. Javier, um, with who I've been calling Javier, I hope I wasn't mispronouncing it too badly, um, Mondahan, and his attorney, Nancy Aldrich. We uh, at this point can't take any more input. Um, you probably should mute yourself, Javier, and uh, so nothing happens. Good. This is a toughie. Um, I think we fully have the authority to protect people's property rights. They, um, I don't know if they've been a tremendous annoyance to the zoning department. Maybe they have, but they did buy an industrial property. And we do have neighbors that don't want to see an industrial use there. And that's part of the complaint. With respect to him and his business reacting to the complaints of the neighbors, he has apparently reacted and tried to reduce the use and the intensity. Um, complaining about people parking on public streets, um, that doesn't fly with me. Public street is a public street is a public street. And if there's parking in there, you can park there. Uh, with respect to pulling in and out of driveways, that's how you use a, an industrial lot. You pull in and out of it. That doesn't make sense to me. Um, the, the lack of square footage is an issue. And it means that if we were to approve this in any way, we would have to uh, bound, you know, create bounds on this that said you can't do X, Y, and Z. Like for instance, you can't do stonework and tree work and you can't operate those types of machines on the property. Um, there's probably other things that we would wanna do, making sure they keep the driveway clear um, for the use of the tenants and emergency use as Javier had told us they would do anyway. Uh, any thoughts? I have several. The first is that it's apparent to me that when they bought the property, B 
be it 20 years ago, 10 years ago, or five years ago, they did not do their due diligence in terms of the size of the property in regard to the zone. And I think that that falls on them. Um, you know, uh, it's not being compliance. Um, I feel the most time that I could see giving them is two months. Um, given the changes that are going on with the industrial zones, uh, I would feel very uncomfortable granting them two years, six months or two years, mm -hmm. because that could be construed as a more permanent uh, approval if it gets lost in the shuffle of papers. Um, I tend to agree, although I don't think the zoning process moves along fast enough to know that it'd be through in two months. I think that might be a little shy of reality, but now let's just continue discussing it. The good yeah, points. No, I, I, <clears throat> I agree that two months, I felt that two years was an out of bound, um, that it was beyond bounds and one year was an outer bound. So in classic negotiating fashion, I think we've got a bid and an offer of two months and 12 months. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I, I would go with two months if I thought zoning would get everything done in that time, but I think they're concerned with an awful lot of things at the moment. So I, I don't know. I, I think, yeah, for me, and this is not a hardship, but two months, uh, you know, starting the clock at the end of the year with the pandemic uh, apparently worsening not apparently, clearly worsening. Um, and the difficulty in finding uh, somewhere else, I think two months is a very short period of time. I would yeah. suggest a year. Well, could we think of six months? You, since if you would suggest a yearly, I would second a year. Yeah. I would do yeah. a second. At least six months, because Mr. Kleppen mentioned six months as being needed. So I think we would do that. Okay. I have but, no problem but, with six months. But are there I, board members that absolutely don't want to do this at all? I don't want to do six months. I would like to do a year. And okay. even though I have only sat on this board for a short period, I did have real estate experience in New York. And anyway, I think, um, I feel like maybe there's a, I don't want to punish these people. I want to give them a, a real chance to find a place. And I think it really would take reasonably a year to get it all sorted out. And that's, yeah, I, I mean, I, I understand that this is not a large enough space, that this has been in violation, whether yeah. they knew about it or not. But the bottom line is, is they have been operating. Um, I don't want to be punitive about it. I just, we just want to kind of fix it. But I don't think, Three months or six months is going to do it. Two years may be too long, but I would think a year is really, especially in this time when there's so many things that are up in the air. Well, yeah. that's my thought. I, I agree with the year. I think one of the biggest problems we have that's kind of a silent problem is these small construction yards that pop up in residential areas. And from where I'm sitting, uh, within a quarter mile of three directions of my house, there are individuals running small construction yards, uh, two of which I can actually see from my own house in daylight. So I don't want to encourage any small contractor who might say, well, this is a marginal property. I'll just move everything to my house. And it's obvious the owners of this property did that for a time and got caught. And I don't want to encourage that type of behavior. So I think a year. Yeah. But Lee, it is an industrial zone. And some of these- oh, I, I, I agree with you. Yeah. Yeah, some of these other yards you're talking about aren't in industrial zone. I know, but people think they are. Yeah, well, they just pretend. They, they, they think are. if I can park three backhoes here, I'm good. Yeah. 
So I think a property owner that is, thinks they're in an industrial area can use it as an industrial use. That was my earlier point. They are shy on the square footage requirement, which okay. means we, we are more than capable of um, bounding their use. But at the same time, what they're asking for is a dead end. Um, if in six months time or one year's time, uh, they haven't resolved their issue, uh, they have to shut down. That's yes. the problem with getting this type of an exception. There isn't a way out. It comes to an end, and the end is certain. Well, that's why I feel I, I, we're being some... generous, giving them a year. No, okay. I, I think we are coalescing around a year. Are we well, not? Well, let me just projecting? let me suggest that the two-year time frame uh, in this particular time in our lives might be worth consideration. First of all, uh, this applicant has already demonstrated uh, a willingness and a desire and some energy uh, to comply and find a location for uh, the business that is fully compliant. They put the energy into this uh, with, uh, without results at this point, but that doesn't diminish the fact that the energy has been put forward. In addition to that, the applicant faces an uncertain economy that has affected business applications uh, in Norwalk and across the nation and because it's just doggone difficult to figure out what the future looks like. He faces, the, I think, the hardship of the city of Norwalk uh, studying changes to its zoning laws that affect businesses like this business. And so the ability to find with confidence a site that will meet the uh, whatever new regulations are put forward uh, in the coming weeks or months uh, might be hampered, might be difficult to, uh, for the seller or the lease, leaser of properties to come to a, a legitimate conclusion. So I don't see, I mean, the government doesn't move that fast, does it? And so given the fact that this client, this uh, business is trying his best to find a location, and I expect that effort will continue, that if we put a cap on the bottle at two years, it would not be unreasonable. Um, I don't know if other board members feel that way, Ted, but anyway, um, I would love to hear that from everybody and make sure that we got everybody's voice here. Yeah. I'd like I, to add, let's just try Marilyn because Marilyn gets go ahead. down quite a bit. Let's, Marilyn. Let's do well, uh, you know, um, I will just say that this is a, a hard time for, for everybody and certainly businesses. Um, you know, with COVID, with things just going so slow. And I think Tad makes a good point. I mean, there's certain people or certain situations that if they show good faith, I mean, I could be persuaded. You know, what I don't want to see is that, you know, like a, a two or six month, I think these people are trying to do their best. And it is really a tough time for businesses. So I would consider it, Tad. I would. All right, so I'm thinking that we have one year. We have one year on the table. We have two years on the table. Uh, does anybody disagree that those two are the things that are on the table? No. No. All right. Um, I think the point that they weren't that careful in their property selection is probably a good point. But they're there. They've been there a long darn time. And it is an industrial zone, and most of the complaints really are targeted at it not functioning. Like they'd rather it weren't an industrial zone is really the way to put it. And it is, and I don't know that the zoning group could go backwards uh, and decide it's not industrial, and therefore an industrial use there has to go away. I don't think that would pass muster in the courts. Um, so, shall we? grant an exception that has a dead end. And I don't think we have any other option. Uh, and so really, if we want to do this, and it sounds like the board members do, 
then we have to choose between one and two years. I favor a year. Um, anybody else favor a year? I favor a year. Okay, so Keith, I think you're deciding. I negotiate deals for a living. It's <laughs> been easier than this one. <laughs> Um, I, I think perhaps given the nature of the board's views, we should go the old fashioned way and split the baby and go for 18 months. And then uh, the board is not offended. And I think 18 months is probably a good, good outcome for the applicant. Okay. You want to make a motion that um, we provide an exception for an 18 month period and that the business uh, not include uh, large uh, equipment that creates a lot of noise. And particularly we wanna avoid um, tree cutting equipment and rock handling equipment. If I could remember that verbatim, I certainly would. Did you, are you taking that down, Tammy? Or somewhere yeah. that, Michelle, then the motion as outlined by Mr. Conroy is the motion made by me. Right, then I'll second it. I did promise Marilyn to second it, so. <laughs> so all in favor? Aye. Uh, raise your hand Aye. so that I know who you are and that we're, Aye. Uh, Aye. everybody's aboard, uh, so it's unanimous. And it's 18 months and it has restrictions. And make sure Javier understands at the end of 18 months, that's it. All right, thank you all. Thank you. Okay. Um, I think we have some more business to conduct. Well, we have one more item to approve. Oh, yes, we do. Oh, we do. Oh, yes, we, we do. do. We have we item. We most certainly do. We have item 21-1216-016 Old Saugatuck Road. Um, I just want to start out with a real quick note that while we need to enforce the spirit of the zoning regulations, um, we also have to stand between those regulations and harm done to property owners. And I think if you had a hundred year old structure and you goofed and took it down and then realized it and then tried to remedy that, not two years later, three years later, four years later, like a lot of the folks that come to us, but almost immediately, then I think it's really our duty to recognize that this is a, 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 an acceptable slip and that we could approve this. That's my view. Um, if it had been two, three, four years, then I wouldn't feel that way. Well, I, I agree with you. However, the one thing I would like us to recognize is that Emily Kelting is a design professional, and I am sure she has worked with contractors and architects uh, over her professional career and should have known better. And you know, there, we have no way of extracting punishment. We never have. No, we don't have a way to And do. the fact that she's admitted her error is the first step. And the only and thing I'd like great. to say is that I hope that in her effort to uh, install this shed, that she respects her neighbors and puts forward uh, a more than acceptable design and finish results. Uh, Tammy, we did get two people who are neighbors um, <clears throat> telling us that they um, really appreciate what she's doing. Um, is there anybody that you heard from that said they didn't want this to happen? No. I didn't think so. I think the neighbor right. part of it's pretty much taken care of. Yeah, I think Emily's intentions are good. Um, she just went about this the wrong way. Yeah. I have only one concern, and that is that uh, if we say yes, which is what I suggest that we do, 
uh, that we aren't setting some sort of a precedent whereby people who read through records will say, aha, all I need to do is say I goofed and I'm all set. Well, they would, need, they would need to do a little more than that. They would have to show they immediately tried to rectify it. And that's a good point. somebody for us and they've been three, four, as I said, two, three, four years down the road. And then they claim now that they understand. But, well, so. I, I think what we've learned is that it would have been to a greater advantage to Emily Kelting if she had gone to the building department and said, I've got a structure that's falling down and I need to do something about it. And I think the building department would have done that as I know they have in the past. And so this discussion, which is a matter of public record satisfies uh, my concerns on that front. We've made it clear that uh, coming to us and just saying I made a mistake will not get you an automatic pass. But on this occasion, these circumstances, I would like to make a motion that we approve this request for a variance. Um, I'd like to add one condition. And that is that Emily uh, contact the building department after she puts the structure in place, that they inspect it and that they let us know in uh, uh, the zoning inspector that it passed muster with the building department. That's the condition. So just to clarify, the building inspectors won't inspect it, but the electrical inspector will. Oh, that's right, because it doesn't fall under that. But yeah, Correct. let's get it. Let's get it inspected one way or another, <laughs> and have them tell you what they saw. That would be good. Definitely. All right, terrific. Um, so, uh, we had uh, Keith make the motion. Marilyn, are you seconding? Yes, I am. All right, and so all in favor, raise your hand. Aye. Say aye. 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 <clears throat> We're good. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Bye bye. Okay, bye, -bye. We Thank have you. some more business to do, okay. ladies and gentlemen. And uh, we had uh, a few minutes to approve. Andy, can I ask a quick question? I think this came up before, but that you said it, I guess. There's no, I mean, I did think if, like, instead of someone saying that they do, there's no way that this uh, council can. Um, um, give a penalty out or anything like that. There, there's no, no right. That's what you said, and I, I've heard that before actually at one of these meetings. So there's, uh, no you know, I hate to tell you this, but for me listening on my computer, your voice is so broken up. I have no idea what you said. Oh, Not yeah. a clue. <laughs> Just that there is no way to. Um, penalize someone, you know, giving them a financial, uh, you know, saying. Yeah, I, I tried to establish one a long time ago when I was initially on the ZBA and everybody looked at me like I had four heads. I okay. thought a fine between 100 and 250 dollars in some instances made a lot of sense. Um, but right. okay. I, had, I, I had no one agree with me. So I would be checking them. Okay. Well, at some point, we might want to revisit that. Yeah, I think we should. I think a complete, no, it's just too bad that you didn't know it doesn't work so well for us. But anyway, yeah, I, I was more concerned with the folks that showed up way the heck down the road and, and really were not contrite, but just said the right words. Well, I think this is a discussion we should have in the future. Yes, definitely. So um, with that handled, let's just talk about uh, minutes and I'm trying to remember which group we had going here. Uh, October 21 and November 18. Let's put October 21 first. Is there anybody that had any changes uh, that they needed to see made to the October 21 minutes? Not that I found. All right. Uh, anybody? I move once, approval. Going twice, going three times. Um, I make the motion. We approve. Second. 
Again, All in favor, raise your hand, yeah. say aye. 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 It's passed. Next, October, or rather November 18th, minutes. Uh, any changes, any problems with the minutes? None that I found. All right. I wasn't present, so I can't comment. All right. Ted, I think you approve. weren't there either, were you? I was I there. Can't... Were you at the November 18 one, Ted? <laughs> Yeah, okay, I, I just forget. You remember it well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's hey. just like home. <laughs> Were you there? Were you there? Yes, it's one of those things. So, uh, with there. no changes being recommended, uh, I'll move the minutes. Is there a second? Second. Okay, second. All in okay. favor, raise your hand, say aye. Aye. And Keith, how about you? You're out because you weren't there. Uh, but so I do, I do command the annual election. <laughs> uh, yeah, we were just swapping chairs for a while. Anyway, so well, as long as it doesn't get to be uh, Russia, we'll be fine. Yeah, we're good. You know, um, the top two people swap the chairs. Having said that, I'd like to erase that because that might put me. Uh, somebody might <laughs> say, "Would you like to?" <laughs> No, Keith, yeah. we, we know your your fear of public office here. Um, I, I do want to make one closing comment, and that has to do with the secretary's job. Uh, I think we all know the secretary also functions as the vice chairman, which uh, I've always found annoying that we just don't call the secretary the vice chairman, who also handles secretary. The secretary's job is pretty important um, when you have something to do. And at long last, there is something for the secretary to do. And that is the zoning uh, board of the ZBA has to uh, certify that uh, training has taken place for each of its members. Uh, and this has nothing to do with what Tammy has to do. She has to certify herself um, through the director doing the certification. But the board itself should certify that the members on the board have had the appropriate uh, I think within two years, uh, certain types of training. And we need to, to tie that down. And then there's a report, I think, that has to go in, what, the beginning of January? Is that what I recall correctly, Tammy? I don't think that's for this year, Andy. I think that's next. I think that's 2023. But I'll, I'll double check on that. Yeah, double check when it happens. Because I don't think it, that we have to certify last year. We have to certify the upcoming year. So that right. means we would have to keep a record during the upcoming year as who's certified and when and what. And so we got to make sure we give Lee the what. What is it that you're supposed to certify? And then we got to make sure the members know what they're trying to accomplish in their uh, refresher training. So oh, that's the only thing that out of this legislation that affected us directly. Well, Tammy, just let me know what we need to certify, how I need to do it, and I'll take care of it. Sounds good. Okay. So now the secretary actually has something to do besides be vice chair. <laughs> Thank you, Andy. <laughs> no wonder you didn't want the job. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> Boy, you got that figured out. All right. My Anything take on it is you have to make sure we all do our homework and uh, to your satisfaction. <laughs> I like that. I thought you would. <laughs> Anyhow, um, with all the kidding aside, I appreciate uh, what you put in right now. And, uh, and you know that Marilyn has become a regular member of the board. Congratulations. Yes. And that we have Congratulations. now, when Tad chooses to leave us, um, which I think he's doing soon, uh, <laughs> we have zero alternates. <laughs> so That's don't, don't get sick, don't take vacations. <laughs> So, so the director reached out today to the uh, city clerk and reminded them that we still have now three, now we, we now have three alternate positions open. Yeah. Um, which, and then which means did, it's a problem. That's, that's not a good thing. Yeah, no, I mean, I think he underscored that. Um, are we okay with the meeting schedule for next year? Um, I took a quick look at it. Anybody else? I, I did, I, but I haven't looked at it in terms of what it coincides with, but I have it. I'm, I'm going to take a look at it. Well, you know, if anybody sees a problem, put an email to all of the board members citing what the problem is you saw. 
I think Lee was uh, asked to review it in terms of uh, Judaic. Jewish holidays. Yes. Yeah. And we found no conflicts. Okay. And I don't think we have any other religion represented immediately in the area. So they exist, but I don't think we have to accommodate them. So with that in mind, um, if you do see a problem, make sure you tell us all and tell Tammy, because Tammy has a short fuse on this. She's got to get it into the city clerk pretty soon, I think. All I can tell you is I know I will not be here on March 17th. But, uh, that's no reason to change it, uh, but just to let you know, since we're short of alternates. Well, we better have a couple of alternates by then. That's for Dan. Well, yeah. And I will not be attending the February 17th hearing. So, yeah, we better find some alternates fast. Yeah, real fast. If anybody has uh, possible candidates, if you'd send me a list, because I, I did did succeed, and I'm not tooting my own horn. I just I raised hell, is what I did, and said we got to get this uh, the regulars all set. And I made suggestions, and they followed the suggestions. So I think I could probably make more if you have good people that you think you want to be on the board. <clears throat> um, we can't. All three cannot be a Democrat. Uh, at least one or two need to be non-Democrats. There's an, there's an issue with how the board is constructed under the minority representation law. And it doesn't mean they have to be Republicans, they just can't be Democrats. So with that in mind, if you've had people saying, oh, I'd like to serve, except that you know I'm unaffiliated or I'm an independent or whatever, not a problem. Send me their name. All the better. Yeah. All the better. Exactly. Terrific. Anything else, folks? No, but I'll make a motion. We adjourn for the evening. Yeah, I, second I will that. second that because I haven't even had it. I'll say hi. Aye. 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 Merry Christmas. Happy Merry Christmas, everybody. Happy New Year. Happy New Year.